It's a cold December day in Philadelphia. And a mother is downstairs with her sons where she hears a loud thud coming from the upstairs bedroom. It's the room where her newborn daughter is sleeping, so she leaps up the stairs to investigate. As she gets closer to the room, she's met with horror. Smoke is billowing toward the stairs and she starts to see flames. She is able to enter the room far enough to determine that her baby girl is not in her crib. She hurries out of the room the way she came, baffled by the empty crib. The fire department arrives nearly instantly and has the flames out within minutes. The mother tells firefighters that her daughter has been taken, but they insist that she is just confused and that her daughter has perished in the fire. The mother knows in her heart of hearts that that's not true. But she'll have to take matters into her own hands to prove that they're wrong. Welcome back to Crime A to Z, where we detail cases and criminals from their very beginning until well after other reporting ends. Today, we'll be talking about a unique case that has a plot that we hadn't encountered before. It's about a determined mother doing what she has to do to get her daughter back. So sit back as we dive in. And before we get started, we genuinely appreciate that you guys have been hitting like and subscribe. It helps us bring you more videos, so please take a moment to click if you like how we present this case. Let's go. Pedro Vera and Luzida Cuevas were Puerto Rican immigrants living in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. In 1997, Luzeda, who went by Luz, was 25 years old, and Pedro, a car mechanic, was 33. They were comfortable and happy, living in their two-story row house in North Philadelphia. The couple was in a committed relationship and had begun to start a family. They already had two sons, ages 5 and 4, and they had another child on the way. On December 5, 1997, Luz and Pedro welcomed a baby girl into their family, who they named Delamar Vera. Sweet baby Delamar was beautiful, and the couple was ecstatic. But the family's happiness would soon face tragedy. Ten days after the baby was born, the family was enjoying a fairly routine day. Luz had just put baby Delamar down to sleep in her upstairs bedroom and was tending to other responsibilities around the home when she heard a loud noise upstairs. Panicked, she raced upstairs to check on the baby. But what she found instead was the upstairs level of her home filled with smoke and flames. Despite the deadly obstacle, she fought through the smoke and miraculously made it to the upstairs front bedroom where Delamar was sleeping. She went straight for her crib. The baby wasn't there. She noticed that the bedroom window was open. She left the room barely able to escape. But faced with the prospect of her baby somehow still being in there, she somehow managed to brave the smoke and flames a second time searching as thoroughly as she could. But still, no baby. Suffering burns, including on her face, she converged with her sons outside in front of the home. Firefighters were promptly on the scene, and Luz frantically tried to explain to them that she checked her newborn daughter's crib and that she was missing. With Luz speaking very little English, she did her best to convey the urgency of finding her daughter. But the firefighters either didn't understand or disputed what she was saying. They told her that her daughter had perished in the fire and that the fire likely consumed her entire body. Luz didn't buy it. She continued to try to convince them that her daughter was missing. At some point, Pedro, who was not at home when the fire broke out, arrived home in time to see the top half of his home engulfed in flames. Firefighters handed him a yellow plastic bag filled with what they said were the remains of his daughter. But they were wrong. It merely contained the remnants of charred bedding from the baby's crib. The fire was brought under control within 14 minutes, and Luz was sent to the hospital for the burns she suffered on her face and for smoke inhalation. The family was beyond devastated, but they weren't giving up. They tried to convince the authorities that their daughter was not in the room and had not been consumed by the fire. They reminded them that they didn't recover a body, that the crib was empty just minutes after the fire started, and that the window in the room Delamar was sleeping in was wide open, despite the extremely cold weather outside. But police easily and swiftly dismissed the claims of the penniless family of immigrants who spoke very little English. They closed the case. The official report stated that Delamar perished in an accidental fire caused by a homemade extension cord. Her remains were never found, and the couple's hands were tied. But their minds would not rest. 
Reflecting on the day's events leading up to the tragedy, Luz and Pedro recalled how they had received a visit from one of Pedro's cousins through marriage, Carolyn Correa. It wasn't a shock to have a relative visit. That had become commonplace since the baby was born with family eager to visit the new addition to the family. But Carolyn's visit was quite unexpected and a little odd. She and Pedro were not close at all, and Luz had actually never even met her prior to that day. Pedro had not seen her for years and didn't even know that she knew their address. Her reason for coming to the home was to ask Pedro if he could take a look at her car brakes, which were giving her trouble. Pedro obliged and began inspecting her brakes. Once it was clear it was going to take him a while, she went inside to visit with Luz. Having never spoken with each other up until that point, they just made small talk. Struggling for conversation, Carolyn noted that they had something in common. She said that, like Luz, she had also recently had a baby. They visited the baby upstairs, admiring how beautiful she was. At this point, reports about precisely what happened are inconsistent. But what has been reported most consistently is that Luz put the baby down to sleep in her crib in the upstairs front bedroom. Carolyn somehow lured Pedro away from the home, then returned and told Luz that she'd forgotten her purse upstairs. It was shortly after that that the fire broke out. So the couple had their suspicions, kept their eyes peeled, and asked anyone who would listen to do the same. They mourned the loss of Delamar, but never lost hope of someday finding her. They went on to have another son together in 1999, and the couple tried to move on with their lives. Months passed, then years. And ultimately, the strain of their loss became too much to bear. And the couple split in 2002. Pedro would recall. I wouldn't blame Luz for leaving the baby upstairs on her own. She would blame me for spending too much time on the street. And then, fate finally happened. In January of 2004, six years after the fire, Pedro's sister was throwing a birthday party for her three-year-old granddaughter, and she had invited Luz and her children. Carolyn Correa was also invited, along with her six-year-old daughter, Alia whom Carolyn had named after the famous R&B singer. Luz wasn't at the party very long before she encountered the six-year-old. Once she did, her immediate thought was that not only did Carolyn's daughter look like both her and Pedro, but she also looked like baby Delamar. The young girl even had the same dimples as Luz and also looked like her other children. And that was the last proof that Luz needed. Because three years prior to that, before Pedro and Luz had split, Pedro had encountered Carolyn, who came up to him and told him that he was looking well. She then pointed to a toddler in the back of her car and told him, That's your cousin. Pedro didn't believe her. He knew instantly that that was his daughter. He stared at the toddler until Carolyn became uncomfortable and left. He came home and told Luz. The baby looked the same as us. She had the same complexion, everything. But the parents still felt powerless, with no avenues to pursue their claims. But now, three years since that encounter, standing eager and anxious at this birthday party, Luz was ready. Seeing the young girl with her own eyes and having zero doubt that this was the child that had been ripped from her household, she went into action. She called the girl over and told her that she had gum in her hair. Then, under the guise of helping the girl rid her hair of the gum, she removed several strands of her hair and placed them in a plastic zip-top bag. But the poverty-stricken family still could not afford to pursue the DNA tests that would, most certainly, confirm their suspicions. So Luz reached out to authorities again, this time with what she thought was proof that warranted their attention and a DNA test. But again, they refused. The mother needed some weight behind her request, and she finally thought of how she could get it. She enlisted the help of her state representative, Angel Cruz, during an hour and a half meeting with him, she pleaded her case. While the story seemed far-fetched, Cruz found Luz to be credible. So he convinced authorities to open a case and submit Luz's sample for DNA testing. The results came back, and it was a match. The girl that Carolyn claimed was her daughter was, in fact, Delamar Vera. Carolyn was detained by authorities, and they ran a DNA test on her as well. As authorities awaited the results of this second DNA test, Delamar was placed in New Jersey state custody and temporarily placed with her foster family. When the results finally came in, they further confirmed that Carolyn was not the young girl's mother. 
Carolyn Correa was arrested and charged with kidnapping, arson, assault, and other offenses. Her bail was set at $1 million. With an investigation finally underway, the full story began to be uncovered. In 1997, Carolyn was dating a man named Andre Moore. She reportedly told him some time prior to the fire that she was pregnant and that he was the father. On the day of the fire, when Carolyn returned under the guise of retrieving her forgotten purse, she set the fire, then left. There are no reported details about how she was able to smuggle the baby out of the home before setting the fire. It is still speculated that she may have had an accomplice. It was also never determined whether Carolyn was actually pregnant prior to the incident or not. Carolyn also had a history of arson. In 1995, she had also set a clinic that she used to work on fire after she was terminated from that job for committing fraud. After she abducted Delamar, Carolyn called her boyfriend Andre and told him she gave birth at their home to the baby she had been telling him she was pregnant with. Andre was skeptical and ordered a paternity test, which revealed that he was not the father. The couple split and Carolyn raised the baby on her own. After the arrest, Carolyn, who had three other children, tried to claim that she and Pedro had had an affair and that Pedro had given her Delamar after her own baby had been stillborn. But without any medical records confirming Carolyn's pregnancy or stillbirth, her claim was baseless. Investigators concluded that Pedro was not involved in the kidnapping. During the trial, a forensic psychologist diagnosed Carolyn with pseudocyasis, a condition where a woman falsely believes she is pregnant. He stated that she genuinely believed that Delamar was her child. However, the judge disagreed. He said that Carolyn was manipulative, not delusional. He sentenced her to 9 to 30 years in prison. After the second round of DNA tests where Carolyn was confirmed to not be Delamar's mother, Delamar was sent to live with Luz, and Pedro was allowed visitation. Anticipating the long journey that lied ahead for Delamar while adjusting to her new family, child psychologists recommended that the reintroduction be a slow process. However, the state governor ruled that Delamar should be returned as soon as possible to her real family. And to everyone's surprise and delight, when Delamar first met her real mother, a child hid under a table, then popped out of her hiding place shouting, Surprise! Then she jumped into Luz's lap and gave her a hug and a kiss. When Luz asked her, Do you know who I am? The young girl replied, You are my mother. Luz had waited six years for that moment. While everyone was thrilled, they still knew there would be many challenges ahead, not the least of which was a language barrier. But Luz and Pedro, worked to improve their English since Delamar had been raised only speaking English. Luz said she was confident that her daughter would accept her and they could overcome their hurdles. At the beginning, she decided that she would continue to call her daughter Aliyah for a while, but she would tell her it's just her nickname. She said, little by little, I will call her Delamar. Her real name is Delamar. After the ordeal was over and Delamar was returned to her family, several lawsuits ensued. Andre Moore hired an attorney to help him find out what truly happened to the child he supposedly fathered with Carolyn. The one she told him she gave birth to at her home, but then produced Delamar in the missing baby's place. In 2005, both Luz and Pedro filed lawsuits separately and jointly against the city of Philadelphia, several members of the fire department, the medical examiner's office, and the police department. They claimed, among other things, an inadequate investigation, violation of the National Child Search Assistance Act of 1990, and other claims. The case was dismissed and considered officially closed in 2006. Pedro also filed a claim to seek shared custody of Delamar beyond his visitation rights. Luz is reported to have contested his request, contending that Pedro did not sign Delamar's birth certificate, that he didn't want the baby, and that he refused to help investigate her disappearance. At some point, it was reported that she even claimed other members of Pedro's family may have been involved somehow in Delamar's disappearance. Pedro and his attorneys disputed all the claims, noting in part how the birth certificate signing was due to a simple misunderstanding, and that Pedro was present for Delamar's birth, even cutting the umbilical cord. A New Jersey judge ultimately granted Pedro joint custody and visitation rights. The Philadelphia City Council was reported to have approved several hearings to investigate the fire department and medical examiner's office for their handling of the 1997 fire. 
Balmy uncovered transcripts of the lawsuits filed by Pedro and Luz, we couldn't find any mention of the approved investigation actually taking place. And while the ordeal was technically over and Delamar was returned to her family, things were nowhere near the normal they used to be. The case and its media attention had already thrust everyone into the limelight, and that continued after it was over. Delamar was reported to have her own agent, appeared in TV ads, and enjoyed a few small parts in movies. Both Luz and Pedro considered and or secured book and movie deals receiving offers from numerous producers. So-called showbiz lawyers were obtained. At some point, however, it seemed to become just a bit too much for young Delamar. It's reported that after she posed at the door of her family home on one occasion, the young girl requested of reporters, Don't come no more. Please don't. In 2008, Lifetime Movie Network aired a movie depicting the case called Little Girl Lost, the Delamar Vera story. Little has been reported about any of the members involved in this case since the case left the headlines. Inmate records show that Carolyn Correa was granted parole in 2013. And based on their social media accounts, the rest of the family appears to be a happily adjusted family. We couldn't be more pleased about the happy ending for this determined mother and father and their precious daughter. These cases and these crimes inflict unbelievable life stressors that take down the best of us. And the result is often more heartache and bitter disputes. But from what we've researched, it seems that, not unlike other kidnapped victim parents, these parents simply wanted to bring their baby girl home. And that's what they did. We hope this video gives them the high honor they deserve. So, time for your thoughts. We'd love to hear what you think about this case in the comments below. And if you like how we presented this case as usual, we so really appreciate every like and subscribe. Clicking them helps ensure you don't miss any videos and also helps us get more videos to you, which we love.